Hey guys, today we're going to look at um, our module one, three review for algebra one. On the very first question says to identify the domain of the given relation. Remember the domain is the x values. So I'm just going to kind of scroll over the x axis and look at where there are points. Well, there's a point when x is negative three. There's actually two. There's a point when x is negative one. There's a point where x is a positive one and a point where x is five. So it looks like my domain would be letter B, negative three, negative one, one, and five. In a relation involving the cost of mailing a package to Australia, the heavier the letter, the greater the cost. So the variable, um, the blank variable is the cost of mailing the package. Is that the dependent or independent? Well, it says the heavier the letter, the greater the cost. So the cost depends on how heavy the letter is. Therefore, that makes the weight of the package the independent variable. Which describes the scale on the x-axis that is and y-axis that is most appropriate for the graph? Well, let's look. What is our um, values in our domain? We've got 25, 50, ooh, way down here at negative 37.5. Looks like this goes all the way up to 125. So we're going from negative 37.5 up to... 125 so we know we're not going to want to use a scale factor of one that doesn't make sense <clears throat> so this says the x-axis should extend from negative 150 up to 150 with a scale of 25 that seems pretty good that would cover everything and the y-axis should go from let's look at our y variables um, looks like the lowest is negative 20 and the highest is positive 30 and this says with a scale of 10, that looks like that would be pretty good too because we're in 10, 15, negative 20, 25, 30. So that seems to me like that would be our best bet. But let's just double check. It says both the X and the Y axis should extend from negative 200 to 200. Now with a scale of 100, that's not very good. That's going to, all of the points are going to be it'd be very hard to, it's not going to be very accurate. This is much more accurate, going from negative 150 up to 125 in increments of 25, you're going to be able to get much closer to your values of 25, 50, 125, 75 by using increments of 25 instead of 100. Um, the x-axis should extend from negative 10 to 10. That's not going to help because we need to go from negative 37 all the way up to 125. So, looks like B is our best answer choice. Number four, the graph represents the number of people in a backyard pool throughout the day. Analyze the graph to determine which section of the graph best matches each description. So we're scrolling along here. This is the number of people in the pool throughout the day. So it looks like a steady amount of people are coming into the pool up to here. Then the same amount of people remain in the pool over this given interval of time. Then a few more people come to the pool and then slowly everybody starts to get out of the pool. So it says analyze the graph to determine which section of the graph best matches. So it says the number of people in the pool stayed the same for a while. That would have to be right here because see the number of people is not going up here. So this would be part B. People got out of the pool fairly quickly until no one was left. That's here. All the people are getting out of the pool. The number of the people in the pool increased very quickly. That would be right here. And the number of people in the pool slowly increased. We're increasing at a steady rate over A, so that's that part. Make sure that you note what the x and y axis say. The x shows the time, the y axis shows the number of people, and then this becomes pretty easy to do. All right, determine whether each relation is a function or not. Well, we have to think about our meaning of um, something being a function. Remember, if it's a function, <coughs> excuse me, 
it would pass the vertical line test. So thinking about this, this would definitely pass the vertical line test because no x value is repeated more than once. So this is a function. So I guess I could write the word function. This is a function. Looking at this one, this is not a function. It would fail the vertical line test right here because 3 gets paired with 2 and 3 gets paired with 5. So because of that, it is not a, oh, right here, not a function. Helps if I read the direction or look at the picture. Again, think about a vertical line test. It would pass through two points at any given time throughout here. So it is not a function. Again, looking at my domain, I have all different values of x. So I know if I was to graph it, it would pass the vertical line test. Therefore, it is a function. Number six, remember this is that crazy seeming problem where it looks all weird, but I told you just remember what this is saying that we replace an x with negative 10. So I have to come into this side of the equation and replace x with negative 10. So three times, a negative 3 times a negative 10 all divided by 5 plus 1. Okay, so negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. Positive 30 divided by 5 is 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So the value is 7. Okay, here it says for f of x equals negative 2x plus 7, find the value of f of negative 1 plus f of 4. Well, to be able to do this, first we've got to find what is f of negative 1. Once we know that, then we find f of 4 when we know that, then we can add the 2 together. So 2, negative 2, times negative 1 plus 7, this is my f of negative 1, gives me 2 plus 7, which is 9. Okay, f of 4, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. So 9 plus a negative 1 is 8. So that is my correct answer. We, first we found f of negative 1, then we found f of 4. All right, let's keep going here. For f of x equals 3x squared minus x plus 5, find 2 times f of negative 3 minus f of 4. So first I need to find f of negative 3. So 3 times negative 3 squared minus a negative 3 plus 5. That is f of negative 3. Well, negative 3 squared is a positive 9 because a negative times a negative makes it a positive 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 minus a negative becomes a plus 9, or plus 3, I mean and then plus 5. So 27 plus 3 is 30, so this is 35. If I double 35, this is 2 times 35, which is 70, minus f of 4. Well, I've got to come down here and find what is f of 4. Well, let's see. Let me scroll up here. f of 4 is equal to 3 times 4 squared, well that's 16, 16 times 3 is 48, no, 16 times 3, 16 times 3, well let me come back to it, let me just plug in the rest, minus 4 plus 5, 16 times 3 is 48, minus 4 plus 5 is 49. So f of 4 is 49. So now we have 2 times 35, which is 70. 70 take away 49 is 21. So this function, 2 times f of negative 3, which is 2 times this evaluated when x is equal to negative 3, minus f of 4. So subtract what this function is when I evaluate when x equals 4. And I ended up with 2 times 35 minus 49, which is 21. All right, number 9. 
The graph of 4x minus y equals negative 5 is shown. Does this represent a function? And the answer is yes. Of course it represents a function because if I was to draw in a vertical line, it passes the vertical line test. So what does that mean? Well, that means for each element of the domain, each x value, there is only one y value. There's only one element of the range. Okay, so B is the correct answer. Determine whether each situation represents a discrete or continuous function. Remember, discrete is just a bunch of random points on the graph, and continuous means if I was dragging my pencil along it, it never comes up. So the function converts length from x feet to y centimeters. Well, we know that's going to be continuous because that's a linear function. It's going to be a straight line if I were to graph it. The function y equals 3x plus 2 represents the amount of water in gallons in a tank after x minutes. Again, it's continuous. The water is flowing at a continuous rate. We can have one drop of water. We can have a gallon of water because it's filling up the tank. Okay, this says the amount of money in dollars that you have left after buying x loaves of bread. Well, of course, this is going to be discrete because if... Each bag of each loaf of bread, it looks like, cost $3.50 and only had $50 to begin with. So I'm going to have one loaf of bread is $3.50. Two loaves of bread is $7. Three loaves of bread. I can't buy part of a loaf of bread. So, of course, this one is discrete. And the function that represents marbles in a bag, of course, this is, again, going to be discrete because I can only take out one marble at a time. I can't take out part of a marble to show those fractional pieces in between. Um, so this has to be a discrete function. Number 11, an equation in the form of ax plus by equals c, where a is greater than 0 and a and b are not both 0. A, B, and C are integers with a common factor of 1 can represent either a linear or a nonlinear function. This is false. It would have to be linear because they're talking about the values of A, B, and C. They all have a greatest common factor of 1 and they're not 0. So it has to be a, a linear function, has to be a line. It could be a horizontal line, could be a vertical line, could be a positive slope, negative slope, depending on the values, but this has to be a line. So we can't say that it could be nonlinear. Okay, and this says to write this in standard form. So we know that we want to move that 4x over to the other side. So I'm going to have a negative 4.5x minus 1.5y equals negative 9. Well, for this to be in standard form, I don't want this value to be negative. Okay, now remember, in order for this to be written in standard form, these, this value cannot be negative, and I don't want it to be um, a fractional or decimal. I want it to be a whole number. So what I need to do is um, figure out what can I multiply or divide this by in order to get this to not be a decimal. So I'm thinking that both of these are divisible by $1.50. Um, I always think in money. Money makes things much easier for me. But let's think about that. If I had negative 4.5 and I divided it by negative 1.5, that gives me 3. So when I do that, that gives me 3x, a positive 3x. But remember, if I do it to one thing, I have to do it to everything. Well, we know that negative 1.5 divided by another negative 1.5 is just a positive 1. So that gives me a positive y value. And now negative 9 divided by negative 1.5 gives me a positive 6. All right, so there's my related function. We're going to finish up with number 13, and then I want to stop there for this video. So number 13 says to determine if it's continuous, discrete, or neither. Well, clearly this is neither because it's like partially continuous, but then it breaks. So we can't say that it's discrete because there is a little bit of continuity. We can't say it's continuous because there are breaks, so it has to be neither. This one is obviously continuous, 
and this, oops, and this last one is discrete, and that is where we will stop this video. Make sure if you have any questions, something didn't make sense, send me an email. Make a little note as you're working through this, um, and send me an email to ask questions. Join virtually. Ask me in class. A good chance, um, there's a good chance that if you don't understand it, somebody else doesn't either. And when you send me those questions, then I can explain it for the sake of everybody. So please make sure if you have any questions, reach out and let me know.